SK Hynix is back in the retail SSD market. What does that mean? So right here, I'm holding the S31 Gold. This is the one terabyte version. Also, we have the fourth generation Quartz controller that's made by SK Hynix themselves. So let's talk for a minute about SK Hynix before we get into the review and I show you guys a couple benchmarks. And uh, also talk about why are we doing an SSD video in 2019 and not an M.2 video. Well, maybe they've got an M.2 coming, I, I don't know. Everybody still needs to plug something up to all those SATA ports, so you may as well have something that's gonna be good for you know content creation, editing, and even like if you wanna load up those mods faster in Skyrim and stuff, this would be good for that. So if you've never heard of SK Hynix, you're probably using them right now and don't even know it. They control about 23% of the memory market and they've been doing this since 1983. Now SK Hynix, they're one of like the top semiconductor uh, companies. They're, they're located in Korea. They actually are the OEMs for many different brands out there. So a lot of times if you take the heat spreader off of your RAM and look at the chip, you'd be like, oh, it's an SK Hynix chip. The same thing when it comes to NAND flash memory, like SSDs and stuff like that. They make a lot. So if you open up your laptop, um, you open up your desktop, you open up the case for whatever branded SSD that you have, that it is SK Hynix, especially if it's more high-end stuff. They've been supplying OEMs with SSDs since 2013, so they've been doing this for a while, but now they're coming back into the retail market with the Gold S31. You can get that in America, probably in Europe pretty soon too, but it's gonna be available on Amazon. So first off, let's take a look at the box. We actually have some very minimal packaging, not a lot of nonsense with extra plastic and junk you're gonna have to throw away. And then right behind the drive is a just a small, plastic holder and that's pretty much all the plastic that's in there the rest of this is just your warranty um, your manual like operations manual user instructions all the drives have a, a five-year warranty including the 250 the 500 and also the one terabyte now the one terabyte that we're looking at right now is rated for 600 terabytes of writing so you can rewrite this thing 600 times most people are never going to get anywhere close to that so over that five-year period you guys can do 0.3 drive writes per day Nobody's going to do that. I mean, if you are, then you're probably using some ridiculously expensive data center drive. Let's talk about performance on this drive. SSDs, very mature technology. There's not uh, an extreme room for improvement, but let's just compare it to what we have here in the office to start. We did an Addo disk benchmark, and using our regular Western digital hard drive, not an SSD, you guys can see the performance there. Um, and this is a very, very fast regular hard drive. So this is probably gonna be faster than what a lot of you guys already have in uh, your desktop or laptop. But as you can see there, 168. I have an OCZ drive in the office and I decided to test that out. And uh, over here is the SK Hynix Gold, that it is the top in this category. I also did another test with what we had here in the office, our Toshiba, it's an OCZ Toshiba VX500. And as you can see again, the SK Hynix came out um, on top in that test. I didn't have these in the office, but I know a lot of you guys are very curious as to how it'll perform against these more expensive Samsung drives. We've got the Evo, it's a more expensive one terabyte, very popular. And this is the Samsung 860 Pro, 860 Evo, 860 Pro. This is more of a, you know, a server drive, but the quality of the SK Hynix uh, is up there with this. And also you have the same five-year warranty. So I wanted to test it against this much more expensive Samsung. So we did Crystal Benchmark, the Pro is on the left, the Evo is in the middle, and then the SK Hynix is on the right. And again, uh, with these speeds, I would wager that there's almost gonna be no difference other than the fact that the SK Hynix is going to be less expensive. Moving over to AS SSD, and we're seeing a similar thing here. So it's almost as fast as the Samsung drives yet again. And then in our Addo disk benchmark, uh, we're talking like 536, 535, and 533 as far as the maximum read goes and the maximum writes 506, 505, and 498. So again, it's about the same speed as the Samsung drives, and I like the fact that it is less expensive. Another thing that's nice about having an SK Hynix drive is everything is made in-house. It's nice to have everything from one company. You got the, you know, the packaging is done by SK Hynix. The, <laughs> the case is done by SK Hynix. The NAND flash is done by SK Hynix. The DRAM is done by SK Hynix. And the controller, all built in-house from SK Hynix. If you're someone who's got a few extra SATA ports and doesn't know what to put in them, it's always nice to have a uh, one terabyte SSD in there that's fast. And I'm gonna be using this a lot for like video files that I'm gonna be editing, uh, creative files, and even like working with Unreal Engine or Unity. If you want your projects to load up faster, you can put them on this instead of your old spinning hard drive. And you can get a terabyte, which is gonna be plenty for most people out there working in game development. Throw it all on here, and then things are gonna open up much faster. Now, if you're someone who has a uh, super high-end computer with several different M.2 slots, I would recommend going with M.2 first because that's gonna be the fastest, but it all depends on the price you're gonna pay. If it's like 
twice the price to get an M.2, you might want to start thinking about, hey, this is not what I would consider a budget SSD, but it's going to be, you know, more budget friendly compared to some of the high end M.2. The M.2 is going to be a little bit faster and it's, it's 2019. So SATA is a very mature technology that's been around for a long time. So when it comes to storage, people who don't have M.2 as an option, people who are upgrading from older hard drives and stuff like that, then that is when this comes in. Speaking of that, we do have some tutorials on how to migrate away from your old spinning disk hard drive and, you know, getting a nicer life right over here. They made this really easy when it comes to migrating. They partnered up with Macrium and they make Macrium Reflect. SK Hynix has worked with them to put together their own version of the software. It's very much the same thing, but just even more streamlined in my opinion. And we did some tutorials so that you can follow along and easily move your windows and all your files from one place to the other with just a few clicks and then you won't have to worry about reinstalling windows and all the nightmare that goes along with that reinstalling all your programs and applications and that sort of thing so be sure to go ahead and watch those tutorials especially if you're someone who's new to all this and, and you're worried about like you know not knowing how to move things from one to the other it's super easy so do not be afraid it's cool to do it and it's cool to upgrade. I'm probably gonna pick up a couple more of these just to speed up some old laptops that still have, you know, 2.5 inch spinning hard drives, but we're gonna move to a 2.5 inch SK Hynix Gold S31. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw those in the comments. Be sure to grab one of our t-shirts, especially if you're big fans of Apple, right? These will work in Apple computers too and, and Linux, but Linux guys already know everything, so I don't need to tell you guys that. Questions, comments, anything you like, put that right down below. Also, all the links to check these out are going to be in the top of the description. So go ahead and check out the latest prices by clicking there. See you guys later.